All right. Welcome, everybody, to our first Motivational Monday. <laughs> I, I believe I know most of you on the call. I'm Kim Parmeter, the Executive Director for the Hermantown Area Chamber of Commerce. And, you know, this has been just, I think, one of the best ways to put it is a roller coaster. Um, and wow, there's been some really great days where a lot of things have been happening that are just very positive and exciting. And then, whoa, it just it seems like at the bottom of the roller coaster, and it's been hard to pick up motivation to keep on going. And I got to thinking there are definitely some folks within our Hermantown Chamber membership that, you know, they're just those people that you like to talk to because they just pick you back up again, just through their, their natural abilities. And so um, one of the first people I thought of was Nikki Karnowski, owner of Metamorphosis CCT. And I reached out to her about this concept and she said yes in like 15 minutes. So thank you, Nikki. That was wonderful. <laughs> and so she's going to talk to us a little bit today about seven tips to help you, help you focus on being productive and remaining positive when working from home. And oh my goodness, I appreciate it. I got to see her do a similar lecture and it was wonderful and it just kind of helped me through the rest of the day. So um, I'm very excited to turn things over at this time to Nikki. Um, are there any um, housekeeping rules you wanna talk about or using the chat to get questions going or? Sure, yeah, thanks so much for having me first of all and welcome everyone. Thanks for being here this morning. Um, yes, feel free to use the chat at any time. I'll try to check that. Sometimes the slide goes over that a little bit, so Kim will help me to field those questions. I think we have a smaller group this morning, so I think it'd be great if it's interactive. Don't wait till the, till the end. If you have a question or you want to share something even on that topic that's worked for you, uh, just jump right in. I think that it's um, a great group to do that in. So, um, How's the tech for screen sharing? Can I start to share mine? I think you should be able to. Yep. Okay, so great. I'll let you take that over. If you can't, I'll punt. Okay. <laughs> it looks good. Like it's working. Yay, Yay for tech. <laughs> Yay for tech. Hello. Well, uh, today what I want to share are things that have worked for us. We've worked from home for years. Um, things we've implemented with clients and learned also in our work with them. And then also research on productivity and also um, our mindset. So hopefully today you'll get something. I would say, you know, pick one thing. We can't do them all, but maybe one thing um, that could help you to focus, to be more productive or uh, remain positive. Like I said, I'm sure you have really uh, good things too that you've learned. And we're, we're gonna give some time for us to go into breakout sessions. Or if it's small enough, we can even talk like this at the end and um, we'll share that. So the very first thing uh, is really looking to optimize our environment. I, I love this quote, you know, for every minute we spend organizing and hours earned. So I think sometimes we're like, ah, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time to work on my space. But honestly, this is, this is um, where we usually start with a lot of our clients if they come and are like, I, I'm just struggling to get things done. Let's look at the space and start there. And so I think it's probably pretty self-explanatory, but you know, look at, do you have clutter and piles and things that are mounting? It's probably not gonna um, add to be your most productive space. So if you can take an hour or two and get your workspace in order, get it clean and um, just where it really feels good, that's gonna go a long way. You know, if you wanna go the extra mile, if you have a, a room that's specifically for your office and you can put a fresh coat of paint that's soothing and put some nice touches in there, you know, do that. The whole goal is to make it welcoming and inviting. You know, sometimes um, in my space, I'll put, I like fresh flowers, so I'll put some flowers or, or even a candle, whatever that is for you, you know, find that and really work to make that space inviting. If you are like stuck, like maybe your workspace is small at home and you're at the table, I think at the minimum, take, take the rest of the distractions off. You know, get a laundry basket, put them in the basket and put them in another room so you can have a clear space. You know, good lighting. If you can have a little bit of a view, that makes it great unless you're distracted by that. So, so really looking at that physical environment. And then the second thing, uh, we, we work um, a lot with clients on this and that's just an overall productivity tip. 
uh, shut off those alerts on your phone, on social media, or on email. I don't know about you, but if I don't do that, it's like ding, ding, ding. And then it's like, well, I'll just answer this one um, person on social media. And before you know it, an, an hour has gone by. So ideally, we suggest checking your email and those things, you know, once or twice a day, maybe mid morning and then afternoon. Um, Michael Hyatt, he's big on these product productivity tips. He also shares that. He just explains, um, you know, in the morning, if you start to just get right into your emails, that can kind of derail your morning and you're just stuck on that. So do, do um, what you need to do first and we're gonna get into that. But any questions on that or any, anything that has worked for, for you in, in setting these boundaries? Well, Nikki, I, I will tell you that for the longest time I have turned off my email alerts um, and that I've had people kind of say, well, how come you didn't get back to me for so long? And um, one of the things I've been learning is, is I inform people right up front if they're kind of new with meeting me. Uh, try to, at least I try to remember to say, I do not get to my emails maybe once or twice a day. Yeah. Um, I think that's I great. Setting those, setting those expectations with people. I think today, we're, we're so like, you know, on, on the ball and that's great, you know, within the hour. But I think realistically, if we get back to someone within 24 hours, that's really good. Obviously there are some jobs that you're expected to be on and there are some different nuances. I'm not su suggesting that if your job is one that you have to constantly check, but most of us probably don't have to. Um, and we're going to gravitate to some of those things. So yeah, I always tell somebody, if you want to get a hold of me, you call me, I will get back to you right away. If you call me. But yep. if you text me or email me, there's no guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing, um, prioritize. And this is really uh, setting the intention for your day. What, what are your top three things you need to get done today? And uh, really sticking to those. Um, I love the book. I'll, I'll share with that. We have a little link to a local bookstore. You can get this if you don't have it. We actually do mastermind groups and work with teams on this. It's... Um, called Eat That Frog, and it's basically, you're gonna do the worst thing, the thing you don't wanna do, that big thing first, and get that off your plate. Because studies show, if you tend to do that, all the other things fall in place. And and you know then you have the fun things, the things you like to do, um, to do. Just by doing these little tips, the eating that frog, and by um, shutting off those emails, one client we worked with, they estimated their employees save, were saving an hour, of, or uh, about two hours a week, just from those little tips. So think about that. That's, that's per employee. So that really does add up. Um, you know, you figure you have an office of 10, that's 20 hours of increased productivity that you're getting um, from those things. Um, I think that was all with that. that I, oh, the other thing, the other thing with this, um, one thing that's helped if you're someone, I, I tend to, I'm really good once I get started, <laughs> but it's getting that focus to get started. So something that can help you is a Pomodoro principle, it's called, or technique, however you want to say it. The, it's just very simple. You set a timer for 25 minutes and you commit to, you will not give in to any other distractions. You just focus at the task at hand for 25 minutes. After that, you can have a five minute break. Um, after four cycles of that, you can take a 20 minute break. So it's kind of just a really effective way. If you're someone who tends to like, I call squirrel, <laughs> it can get you focused because everybody can usually focus for 25 minutes and usually then you're into the project and you know, you can continue. You don't have to take the break, but um, that just gives you a little, a little something different where you can have a pause. The worst thing and, that I've had experience experience with is the squirrel with the shiny object <laughs> that's another topic <laughs> but you are right I, mean, I can handle a squirrel i can handle a shiny object but when that squirrel comes by with the shiny object i just <laughs> and i think you know it really speaks to we we teach the personality styles it really speaks to we're all gonna have different different styles that productivity, when we when we talk about that, you know, my style is more like I need this done by noon. That's very effective for me. My husband's more the minute by minute, eight fifty five, you know, to nine thirty. I'm doing this. So you have to find what works for you based on your work style, and that really is innate. And so I think finding that is out is huge. The next thing, uh, establishing healthy boundaries. This is with yourself. You know, the tendency I think when when we're at home 
is work can never end. You know, it's kind of maybe doesn't feel like it. Uh, we're taking a break for tea or maybe we took a break to do laundry. I always encourage people set your work hours. And maybe for some people who have kids at home now, that's flexible. Maybe you're going to get up early and work six to eight before they're up, you know, and then again at noon when people are napping. Yeah. Um, however that looks, try to set those hours and hold to them for yourself. And then boundaries, what you're going to do for yourself. We'll get into that a little bit later, but just good, good self-care. Because if you're not, if you're just letting yourself, you know, go, it, it doesn't, it doesn't help you and it doesn't help um, anyone around you. So the boundaries with family, that's just kind of like, Hey, when I go into this space, <laughs> I don't want anybody to bother me unless the house is on fire or, or whatever that is for you, but really setting some clear expectations. You know, I've seen different things that people do that work. Um, we've, we've actually helped teams like this is, a can be something that goes when we go back to working um, little things you can take to use there too, because Often we see in offices, people have a hard time setting boundaries um, with people coming in their office. You know, this is kind of talking about the work boundaries, but they're like, oh my gosh, people keep coming in and I can't get my work done. So some of the ways you could do is just a real physical sign that's, you know, a little sign I'm working or, or a little color you put up that, and this is my time that I am just in work, you know, maybe something's hung on your door. So setting that with, with family and then also with work you know, having those conversations, even if they're hard um, with your employer, uh, what, does that, what does that look like? Are my hours, this is what I'm opting for, you know, I need this flexibility now because kids are at home, whatever that is. But also um, maybe it's boundaries with meetings too. Do these meetings really have to be two hours? You know, so I think with each of those subsets and even yourself having the conversation, uh, what do you need? So anybody anybody uh, struggling in this area with boundaries or any tips that you want to share well, i'm not struggling with it because you know i'm a single white male sitting in a place all by myself so i mean nobody and i'm old too so i mean nobody comes by to say anything <laughs> nobody's bugging you scott no, oh. nobody's <laughs> bugging me and i'm out here in the middle of the national forest i mean the biggest distraction <laughs> i get is the pro hi kelly i'll let cc know Okay, we're here. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, Sorry. One of, one of the next things is creating uh, startup rituals or shutdown rituals. It's just kind of, I think we innately do this when we go to work, you know, whether it's like, okay, we're taking off our coat, we move to the coffee area, we get our coffee, we go to our desk. What What is that for you to get started, you know, when you're at home? Um, uh, it's just a really good pattern to get in for the day. What I usually do uh, for me, it's like getting my coffee or tea and then I'm like, okay, it's time to sit down and get started here. And then shutting down rituals, you know, a lot of time, maybe an hour before your work day's over. Okay, I'm gonna check my emails, I'm gonna finish my calls and I'm gonna start to power down. That way it's not just a continual work cycle, you know, all day, all night. Um, you wanna have boundaries. So especially now if family's home that you have some time with them too and there's some sort of uh i don't like using the word balance because i feel like our life should just be you know it should be an extension of what we're doing um but we have to find that the next the next one is feeling our bodies i think that we all know this but it's easy when we're at home to just like wait till the last minute maybe we worked all day and we forgot to eat so now we just you know go to the fridge and grab whatever's quick so some planning with this like maybe on a sunday our family usually does this um not all it's not always fun but we can make it fun you know put on the music everybody um cuts up the veggies what i find in our house if that stuff isn't done and prepped nobody eats it it's it's amazing to me like we can have all the fruit in the fridge but all of a sudden if we wash it and put it in a bowl and cut it up like oh it's gone in two days so um taking that time to prep and um, value, valuing yourself enough to pack your lunch and have it in the fridge so you can go grab it at noon and have kind of a, a lunch time. And then uh, committing to get out a little bit each day. I think even if it's just for 15 minutes, it does a couple things, gets our body moving, you know, hopefully our heart rate up, but it also um, allows us some of that thinking time. And I think uh, it can just reset our day. You know, sometimes people are feeling isolated. There's nothing like getting out when the sun is shining. I think it can, can really help us there. So, and, and this next one, 
it, these all kind of tie together, you know, with the self-care, but just keeping your mindset in check. You know, I always say your mindset matters and it really does set the trajectory of your day, your week and how things will go. And it probably, you know, um, spills over into your family's day too, based on that. So some of the, some of the things, the strategies you can use, um, everyone, once again, you have to find that thing that works for you and you, you'll know that best, but these are some things you can do, you know, take a daily inventory. Don't wait till you get to day four and you're just beside yourself or, or ready to explode or whatever that is. How are you feeling today? You know, if you're already feeling a little on edge, what do you need to do to fuel, fuel yourself? Do you need to get out and take that walk? Do you need just some quiet time? Um, try doing it proactively versus, you know, reactively. And then just, just keeping in mind this whole thought, this, you know, our thoughts really drive our emotions, which align with our actions and then produce the results we're getting. So keeping those thoughts in check and, and working on them. If you're having a negative day, what do you need to do? Um, we teach some of this with our clients, just how to um, work on that. The next thing, I think now this is really a good one, focusing on the cans and not the cans. I think we're all like, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that. So um, actually, Nicole, I, I, I um, got this off their uh, radio, Life 97.3 with Jill. I thought this was a wonderful little tip they shared for families to do the jar for kids. You know, have a little jar that you are going to put all those little things you can do when this, when everything clears and COVID is, you know, I should say over, but we go back to kind of things as normal or as normal as they can be. So what are some of those things you're looking forward to doing that, putting that in a jar? You can even do that for yourself. Like all the, you know, things you're going to be excited over to do, or you want to do and then pull those out and do one. So I kind of like that, you know, just a way to focus um, on the positive. And then that third thing is practicing gratitude. It's something I think we hear about. Um, people might say, oh yeah, yeah. Or it sounds a little fluffy, but I want to encourage everybody just to put this into practice, especially now. Uh, look it up. The research backs this. It's not just foo-foo. <laughs> you know, it, there are wonderful health benefits physiologically, um, psychologically, um, helps our sleep. It improves our relationships and enhances empathy. And it's really hard to be negative if you start in the, in the morning. And this can this practice of gratitude can look different. Some people will journal. Some people maybe just get up and three things you're grateful for right off the, the bat. Maybe it's throughout the day. Um, another way I think just practicing gratitude can be to share, do something nice for someone else. And that does a few things. It um, gets us connected to others. And it also gets us kind of off of thinking of ourselves or what what our issues are, you know, or, or things that might be going wrong, you know, whether it's taking groceries to an elderly neighbor or sending a note to somebody, I think that can be another way to practice gratitude, you know, sending someone a note, making a phone call, um, you know, makes a big deal. And that really gets us to our next thing, taking time to connect. I think it's really easy when we're working at home to just self isolate, to get in our own little world. So I think, you know, just a rule of thumb, there's no, right or wrong, but, you know, maybe reach out to three people, whether that's by phone or Zoom, and just connect. Hey, how are you doing today? It doesn't have to be more than five or 10 minutes, but just um, connecting at that heart level with people, you know, even checking in on your customers and clients. Hey, I just want to reach out. You know, how are you doing? I think it means a lot to people. And, you know, our customers and clients are going to remember that uh, touch point you know, after this is done, how did we make them feel? And wow, that was nice. They just checked in just to check in. So I've seen a lot of creative things people are doing, you know, networking, little happy hours, um, lunch with friends. So I think, um, you know, make sure to take time uh, for that connection and not just be self-focused, you know, it's easy just like I said, to be in our own little world when we're working from home. Um, this quote, I, I just like that, you know, change is inevitable and growth is optional. Optional. So um, that's by John Maxwell. He's our mentor. 
we share a lot of his material. But, you know, we have the chance now we can embrace that change and grow in it or we can complain and be miserable and it's not going to change it. <laughs> so I think embrace the, the things that um, we can learn now. There's lots of new things happening, new ways of doing things. So um, getting on board and being positive. Um, those are just some of the things that have worked for us and for clients and um, things that have research has shown to help us be more productive, to focus and to remain positive. Um, we do have some, I forgot to put those up, but I will have Kim send if anybody wants, um, we have a link to the sl these slides today. And then also um, a link if any business owners wants want to sign up we're just doing a complimentary uh either coaching or consulting session for anybody who just maybe is like gosh i'm stuck or i'm struggling we just thought that's our way to give back um we'd be happy to meet and you know help you at least get a little next step forward if, if that would be helpful so i'll have kim uh send that out maybe with a with a thank you um where you could connect to that if you want and then my ask today, just, just in supporting local business, uh, you know, we'd love it if you haven't already like our Facebook page and maybe share with others. So yeah, thanks for having me. I think it would be great if we, um, I'm wondering how you feel. Are there enough of us to do the breakouts or should we just share like this? What are your thoughts, Kim? We could share like this. I, I really want to try the breakouts. <laughs> how would, how would you do, do a breakout? I guess if, if, there, if there is a possibility, I, you're talking about like, I would have no idea how you could do a breakout. Um, yeah, you, I, you'd say a breakout, it means like two people over here and two people over here. Chit -chat. Yeah, yeah, I think we could do like three and three or whatever you, you, you well, do the piece, Kim. It's we, fine. We don't I, have I to. Breakouts we we don't I, have to. I'm just wondering how do you do it? Yeah, well, no, that's I, why I was kind of hoping to experiment with that there. Let, so let, let's do it. I think it's great. And here's the nice thing. You get to connect. I found in our BNI group, you know, we have over 50. I think it's been so nice because you actually have been able to have conversations with a few people. Yeah. And, um, I, I love it because, you know, sometimes it's hard when there's that many people and people are talking to go up to them. So it kind yeah. of is a creative way to encourage conversation and you're in the group so you get to talk so i love it so my first question would be to share in the group one takeaway uh today one of the helpful things that you'll use and um what is one thing that you found um outside of these things shared that have helped that have helped you so just one takeaway from today's presentation one thing that works for you that you'd like to share with others <laughs> 